Chairman, ladies, gentlemen, colleagues. Mira Sayar is a leading figure in modern British cultural life. She's a household name as a writer of novels and screenplays, an actor on stage, radio and television, as well as film, and she's also a singer. In all these fields of endeavor, she has received awards and acclaim for her achievements, from the Betty Trask Prize for her first novel, Anita and Me, to having a number one single with Spirit in the Sky in aid of comic relief, as well as an MBE. Mira has also worked for many charities, including as a dementia friend for the Alzheimer's Society, Make Poverty History, Amnesty International, and she is patron of the Newham Asian Women's Project, which seeks to end violence to women and girls. Mira has promoted British Asian culture as an actor in films such as Bhaji on the Beach, which is one of the first British Asian films that spoke for British Asian women. But it was her work on radio, Goodness Gracious Me, which later moved to television, that made her a household name in Britain. The comedy was about the way the British Asians saw themselves, pretending to be British when they were the Coopers or the Kapoors, characters in the extended Asian family, and send-ups of the non-Asian British, all of whom were readily understandable to all, creating a voice for British Asians in contexts where they had not been heard before. The sketches of Skipinda the Punjabi kangaroo, the competitive mothers, how big is his dunda? <laughs> Mr. Everything is Indian, and one of my favorites, Smita Smitten, Showbiz Kitten, are still fresh today. Now, I, I have to be very careful here myself because I can't try and do comedy when I'm in this kind of league at all myself, but I want to mention some of the catchphrases of the much-loved characters a part of everyday life. And they put Hinglish, the mixture of Hindi and English, or perhaps Punjish, the mixture of Punjabi and English, in the OED, including words such as chuddies, underpants. I never thought I'd get to say that at graduation. <laughs> And in the catchphrase, kiss my chuddies, which has become everyday speech. But it took people a while to realize that the granny in the Kamaz at 42 was Mira. Her disruptive influence on her family was a source of great humor, not least because the series of celebrity guests looked a little unnerved by the unpredictability of the show. Mira's novels, Anita and Me, about growing up Punjabi in the black country and wanting to be English, is now taught at GCSE as a set text and has been adapted into a film, while her Life Isn't All Ha Ha He He about life for 30-something women in London today was made into a BBC drama with Mira acting in it. Mira's career, though, began in theatre, and her many critically acclaimed performances include Rafter Rafter at the National Theatre. She has broken so many barriers, notably the restrictions of playing a British Asian. It's astounding that even today there are few roles in mainstream theatre for British Asian actors. But Mira has also acted in roles which were not written for British Asians, but which now seem as though they were. Shirley Valentine and Beatrice in the RSC's Much Ado About Nothing are both very much her roles. Mira is an ideal person to welcome to the SOAS community, where she will inspire our students and others to step beyond what the world expects of them, to pursue their own dreams and ambitions. For all her talents and international acclaim, Mira has kept her feet firmly on the ground. She has been a great supporter of SOAS and has spoken on occasions to our students and to our alumni. She is an inspiration to us as someone who has refused to accept, lim has refused to accept limits others have tried to impose on her. Perhaps some of you are too young to know that Mira grew up in a Britain where abusive and casual racism were commonplace, but now she is very much part of the new Britain and she commands respect from all, whatever their backgrounds. She has changed forever the way people see British Asians and is a role model for them and for non-British Asian women. Whatever your colour is in Britain today, she has become a model. Mira is what we could call in Hindi an unmol ratan, a priceless jewel, or in English we might call her a national treasure. 
It is my privilege now, Chairman, to present to you Mira Sayal for the award of DLIT, and I invite her to address this assembly. Thank you very, very much. Um, I, I'm very honoured to be here. Thank you, Chairman, um, honoured guests, honoured staff, graduates, and very proud parents. And thank you very much, Rachel, for that flattering citation. It did feel a bit like this is your life, but without loads of people turning up that you never really want to see again. Um, <laughs> It's always a bit strange to hear your life and career encapsulated in one breakneck speech. Uh, firstly, because it makes you feel very old and extremely tired. Um, but mainly because it makes your life sound very neat, as if there was some kind of plan or, or pattern to all the events described. Uh, when the truth of it is, most of my life and career was really not planned at all. Uh, it still isn't. Um, I've been lucky. I've been plucky. I don't mind getting my hands mucky when necessary. But uh, the rest of it has been the most interesting and ever-changing journey. And I realize as I get older and hopefully a little more wiser, I'm beginning to realize that really the journey is everything. Um, maybe because I was the first child of pioneering immigrants who had undergone the kind of epic events that you usually only read about in history books. Um, my father, for example, went through the partition of, of uh, India in 1947 and ended up in a refugee camp. So because of all of that kind of background and history, maybe I was born with some innate need to, to travel forward, explore boundaries, uh, try and define who I was and what my place was in this country. Uh, maybe it's because I grew up as a really gobby outsider in a very small mining village, all white. We were literally the only Asians in the village. Um, and living up in that background made me question old attitudes and cosy conventions and always look for the humor in the most complicated or strange circumstances. And, you know, I often wonder, maybe if my parents hadn't emigrated, what would I have done? What would my life have been? One of those sliding doors kind of moments. Probably I would have married a suitable boy back in India, someone sensible like a pharmacist. <laughs> or a biz businessman in import-export. Um, <laughs> produced a brace of strapping sons, taught happily in a local school, got fat and content, and never had a moment's thought about who I really was, where I really belonged, because safe and settled people rarely do ask those questions which is why the best thing that my parents really could have done for me was to bring me here, um, to a place where my identity became inextricably linked with my creativity, uh, where my differences made me find expression, uh, where the struggle never felt like pain because it was always, at the end of the day, material. <laughs> As my poor parents and relatives well know, uh, when you're a writer, nothing is sacred, everything gets used, and if you're not careful, you too will end up in a sketch wearing a funny wig. <laughs> so um, I do often go into schools and colleges uh, and talk to students, and I often get asked if I got any advice for those wanting to go into the creative arts or, or just wanting to make their mark in, a, in an increasingly competitive society. And I say to them, as I'm going to say to you, there has never been any kind of grand master plan for world domination. Um, but there are maybe three things I might humbly throw into the pot. Firstly, and I am going to say it, and it is a cliche, but I believe it, follow your passion. I really don't think your job should be just something you clock in for each morning and long to escape each evening, especially if you've got to do it for the next 45 years. Passion is the motor that will push you through the hard times and give you joy in the good times, and most importantly, give your journey meaning. A life without purpose goes very, very slowly. Secondly, humour will open more do doors than ambitious aggression ever will. Goodness gracious me did more for race relations than a thousand political speeches, and most importantly, as Rachel said, put chuddies in the Oxford English Dictionary, which means that you can spell it in Scrabble. Now, if that isn't a, a blow for multiculturalism, I don't know what is. 
And thirdly, and most importantly, I think, along with the passion is compassion. Sharing what you have and what you learn, however little, gives you so much back. I have learned so much from working with New Amazing Women's Project, and because this is all a journey, I know there will be so much more to discover in the future. The honour that you've given me today will certainly make my travels a lot more light-footed, and may I wish everyone graduating today a passionate journey into their futures. And thank you for this huge honour. Finally, I can tell my parents I'm a doctor. <laughs>